Welcome everyone, it is Andrew here from Apple Insider. Today we are tackling a question that you guys have been asking since the launch of Apple's latest gear, and that is whether you should pick up the new 13-inch MacBook Air or the new iPad Pro. So we're going to break this down. We're going to talk about the different sizes of iPad versus the different models of MacBook Air. Pros and cons are and which one you should possibly go with by the end of this video. So let's go ahead and just dive into it. Starting off with the screen size. Now, there are three different screen sizes that you can go with. There is the 11 inch iPad Pro, there's a 12.9 inch iPad Pro, and then there is the 13 inch MacBook Air. So when looking at screen sizes, the 12.9 inch and the 13 inch MacBook Pro, or the 12.9 inch iPad Pro against the MacBook Air is probably the most apt comparison, but it should be remembered that there is that 11 inch iPad Pro still out there. There's nothing wrong with this device. And when it comes down to performance, there's literally no difference, no difference at all in the performance between the 12.9 inch and the 11 inch iPad Pros. So that's just something to remember. If you don't need that extra screen size, then it doesn't hurt to go with a smaller iPad Pro. So just something to keep in mind as you're kind of comparing all the devices there. A lot of people are comparing the 12.9 inch uh, Pro to the MacBook Air but don't forget there is a Justice Cable Pro out there, that smaller screen. I know a lot of people loved that MacBook that was out there with a 12 inch screen. They didn't need the 13 inch screen, so I know people are gonna like it, so don't forget that there is still a viable option in this comparison. A few other benefits that the iPad Pro has. It is an inherently touch-based system running on iPad OS. You can use the touch screen all the time. You don't have to worry about a trackpad or mouse or bringing those accessories along. You have the cameras around the back. Uh, obviously nice, new, pretty, fun cameras on the new iPad Pros, including that ultra wide angle lens, a 12 megapixel wide angle lens, and the LiDAR scanner for all the AR features. So if you are big into the AR stuff or use the, any for just the utility of them, that is something you can do on the iPad Pros that you just can't do on a Mac. Now, of course, the Mac has a bunch of benefits of its own. It has an integrated trackpad and a full keyboard. At that $9.99 starting price point, you don't have to pick up any additional accessories. You have everything you need. It's basically that whole aluminum body. The screen is protected by the bottom of the keyboard. You have the keyboard and the trackpad all built in. So you don't have to add anything extra on that price point. So if you go with an iPad, you're tacking on all those accessories. You're buying uh, a keyboard if you want to be productive with it, which a lot of people do. And thanks to 13.4, iPad OS 13.4, you can now finally use a keyboard or a, you can use a trackpad or a mouse uh, via Bluetooth on these devices, really fully baked into the OS. It's very smooth, very nice, but it means you're adding that additional accessory onto your shopping cart. So now you have an iPad, plus you have a keyboard, plus you have a trackpad or a mouse. We also can't forget that iPad Pro has support for the Apple Pencil, which is huge for artists, photo editors, and even adding a video can be beneficial to do with an Apple Pencil. When it comes to performance, things are a little bit more cut and dry. The iPad has incredible performance. Thanks to the A12Z Bionic processor, if you wanna get things done that require more processing power and the software is available on the iPad, then you're gonna to wanna to go with the iPad. Exporting a video, editing uh, photos is all going to be more capable on the iPad than it is on the MacBook Air. Look at these Geekbench scores. Look at the, just the iPad versus the base MacBook Air. There's a huge difference, especially in that multi-core test for the iPads. It's a massive improvement. If you take that MacBook Air and you upgrade it to that quad-core i7 processor, still the iPad Pro is more capable, though the numbers are much more aligned. So here's the funny thing about that i7 processor. If you tack on that additional $250 for the quad-core i7, you're going from $999 to $1,250. If you take an iPad, say the iPad Pro, and tack on a keyboard and a trackpad as well, whether it's Apple's Magic Keyboard that is set to launch, or maybe just a keyboard of your choosing, maybe the Bridge Folio that we have, uh, any of those options, but you're tacking those on to your base iPad Pro, guess what your price is starting to look at? Now they're both very similar in terms of performance, in terms of design and size, and in functionality. So it becomes very blurred on which one to go with. Now the iPad still does have the edge with performance there, and it does have the ability to be removed from whatever case folio can be completely excised from any accessories it's connected to. And you need to just take the tablet on its own. So that I think is a big benefit of the iPad over the MacBook Air. 
But when it comes down to it, it could just be software that limits you and makes your decision for you. If what you need to do is not available on the iPad, then you can't get an iPad. If there's software you need that only works on a Mac, then you're gonna have to side with the Mac. The MacBook Air is an incredibly capable device. It has two USB-C ports, has upgraded storage on the inside, and of course everything is combined into one unit. And if your software is only available on the MacBook Air, then you're gonna have to side with the MacBook Air over the iPad. But if you don't mind adjusting to a new way of doing things, a lot of people are not used to moving their entire workflows to the iPad, the new iPads are a hell of a way to go. Even a couple years ago, this was not even a fair comparison to make because you could not do the same things. But now Apple is out with first party trackpads and uh, keyboards to go with their device. The iPad OS updates have been huge allowing for external storage. You can now actually edit videos on external storage on your iPad, use an external monitor with it at the same time to preview your work. This now is a very capable device that can replace a MacBook Air. You have to adjust a new way of doing things, but if you're up for the challenge, the new iPad Pros are absolutely a more powerful and efficient way to get things done. I'd love to know what you guys think. Let me know over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. And if you want to grab an iPad Pro or a MacBook Air, you can find the best prices at the Apple Insider Price Guide down below in the description. Hey everyone, did you guys like that video? Be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys want to see. And follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. And until next time, we'll see you later.